بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Continue with our journey through the lectures on the heaviest of deeds based upon the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he said أثقل شيء في ميزان يوم القيامة أثقل شيء في الميزان يوم القيامة حسن الخلق that the heaviest of things that will be on the scale of your deeds on the day of judgment is good character. So the idea is that we take a point of good character every time we gather together to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today's lecture will be around the topic of the mannerisms and the fiqh pertaining to salam, the greetings that we give to each other. So when we say to each other, assalamu alaikum, you are making dua to Allah azza wa jal, that peace and security is given to the one that you are greeting. That the one you are greeting is saved from all types of harm, whether that is mental, physical, or emotional harm in this dunya and the hereafter. And when you say, wa rahmatullah, you are asking Allah Azza wa Jal to bestow his mercy upon the person whom you are giving salam to. So you can imagine if somebody truly says that from their heart, then that is a heart full of compassion. Because when you're asking for mercy for someone, it means that you have compassion within yourself. Because only the one who is compassionate wants to give mercy to other than himself. So when you say that in the future, remember that. And you, when you say, wa barakatuhu, you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase the person in his provisions. Because baraka has the meaning of increase and remaining. It comes from the word birka. Birka is like a huge pool of water, which remains. So you're asking Allah Azawajal that whatever good the person has in their life, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps it for them and at the same time increases them in it. So what a beautiful dua that we say to one another by saying assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And Allah Azawajal, he says in Surah 24, فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بِيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ تَحِيَّةً مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُبَارَكًا طَيِّبًا And if you enter into your houses, then give this salam upon yourselves, meaning your family members and those that are close to you, your friends and loved ones, etc. in the houses, a, a greeting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is pure and full of blessing. So when one reflects upon the words that they are saying as they enter into the house, how do you think the demeanor of that person is going to be when he enters into his house? Many people, when they've had a hard day at work, they come home and all that tension which was gathered up from work, they release it upon their poor family members. The poor wife, the poor kids. Baba's home now, time to lock yourself in the room. No, when you enter into the house and you give assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, these are words of love, words of compassion, words of caring. So with that in your mind, how can it be that you enter into your house with any type of negativity? So we need to think about these words when we say them to our loved ones, especially when we enter upon them after a hard day's work, those of us who do actually work. Whenever one gives salam to his Muslim brothers or sisters, as we have been mentioning, then this Muslim spreads love amongst the other Muslims. Love and tranquility, something which is so beautiful and something which is so lacking in today's societies. Something which is looked upon as being a bit weak, that if you behave in that manner of being compassionate, if you behave in a manner of trying to spread peace and love, if you behave in a gentle way, then you're weak. No, not at all. Rather, this is a sign of strength that you are able to be different from the grain that everyone else is following. So in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا تدخلون الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تهابوا None of you will enter into Jannah until you believe and you will not have belief until you love. ألا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه تهاببتم He said, should I not guide you to a thing that if you do it, you will love one another? أفشوا السلام بينكم Spread the salam, the greetings of salam amongst yourselves. So by spreading salam in the way that it should be spread, then love is spread and compassion is spread and people that become closer together. So be from that person that when he gives the salam, his face is beaming and he's happy 
It's as though you are so happy to give salam to the person that you are giving it to. Especially when you are replying to the salam. Reply with a smile. So many people, sadly, after you've given them salam, you feel as though you've offended them. The look on their face. So angry. Why did you stop me to give me salam? And he looks at you in a very strange way. You don't know me. Why are you giving me salam? This is something we have to remove from the community. Something we need to be removed from the ummah. When you give salam, it should be given with a smile and with compassion and, and with honesty in, in the uh, meanings that it entails. And especially more so in replying to the salam. You should be grateful that somebody took time out of their busy day, a few seconds, to give you salam. Somebody honored you and thought you were valuable enough to give you this dua full of beauty and mercy. Is giving salam, is giving salam wajib or is it mustahab recommended? Which one is it? Recommended. Okay, recommended wins, more recommended. That's correct. Giving the salam is recommended, but returning it is wajib. Returning it is obligatory. Allah says in the Quran. If you are greeted with a greeting, then give one back which is better than it, or return it in that which is similar to it. So the returning you are commanded to do, right? By Allah Azawajal. And Imam Ibn Abdul Bar, he said there's ijma upon this issue. That it's an agreement, consensus amongst the Muslims that to return the salam is wajib. So again, don't be from that grumpy person. When somebody gives you salam, you just put on a grumpy face and turn away from them. No. When somebody gives you salam, be happy and return the salam to them in the best form that you can, in the best way that you can. Question number two. We had question number one, right? Question number two. I like asking questions because I like the interaction. Question. If you give salam and you are in a group, you're passing by another group and you give them salam, is it incumbent upon every one of you to give them salam? And is it incumbent upon everybody, one of them, to reply to your salam? Because we just said to replying to the salam is wajib. What goes on here? What do you think? Abu Dawood, he collects the Imam of Hadith, that Ali radiallahu anhu said, that if you are in a group and you're passing by a group, it suffices one of you to give salam to that group. Okay? And within that group, it suffices one of them to return the greeting to you. Not everybody in the group has to, but wouldn't it be nice if everybody did return the salam in unison? So the ruling is that if you're a group, only one person has to give it. And the ruling is that the group who received the salam, one of them must return the salam. Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi mention a narration wherein the Prophet وسلم, أن رجل جاء إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال السلام عليكم فرد عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فجلس الرجل فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عشر A man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he said to him السلام عليكم The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم replied to him The man sat down The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ten Kids, ten what? What did the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mean by ten? Any idea? Okay Another man came جاء رجل آخر فقال السلام عليكم ورحمة الله فرد عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فجلس رجل فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إشرون Another man came he said السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Then he sat The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم replied And then said 20 20 what? Kids? 20? 20 what? Okay maybe get it on the third time جاء رجل آخر فقال السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته فرد عليه النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فجلس رجل فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثون A man came to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and said السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Prophet replied to him, the man sat down and then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said thirty Thirty what? Bad deeds or good deeds? Good deeds. So just by saying Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, you get 30 good deeds. Have you ever played that game Pac-Man? The little thing that's running around trying to get as much points as possible. This is what we need to do as Muslims. We want to get as much points as possible so that we can get to the highest levels of Jannah. And one of the best ways of doing that is whenever you meet a Muslim, grab his hand and say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. 
And don't worry if the person doesn't reply to you. You don't care for that because you are caring about getting the reward. If the person doesn't reply, he's putting himself or herself in a dangerous situation. But you want to focus on getting the reward. So try to grab as much as that as possible. Wherever you are, greet the people in the best of manners. Shaykh Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala, he said the sunnah is that if the person is one, you say assalamu alaik with assalamu alayka. This is if the sunnah of the person you are greeting is one, right? And assalamu alaykum is if there is a group of people that you are greeting. However, some of the scholars, they allow assalamu alaykum in all situations. Why do you think that is? Huh? Okay, that could be possible. Yes, that is actually one way of looking at that. When you give somebody this type of damir of jam'ah, it's as though you are respecting the person more, okay? By, by, by using that plural form. But there's another reason. Huh? Because, huh? Huh? More peace? It's what the brother mentioned here. Jazakallah khair. That it's, they say that the angels are with every human being. So you are never in a situation of being alone. So when you give assalamu alaikum, you are intending the person and the angels that are with that person, right? So this is what they say. When you greet the Muslim and you shake his hands, huge benefit. Abu Dawood, Imam Abu Dawood narrates and authenticated by Shaykh Al-Albani, Rahimullah Ta'ala, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, مَا مِن مُسْلِمَيْنِ يَلْتَقِيَانِ فَيَتَّسَافَحَانِ إِلَّا غُفِرَ لَهُمْ قَبْلَ إِنْ يَتَّفَرَّقَا That the Prophet Sallallahu there is no two Muslims that meet one another and give salam to one another by shaking their hands, except that their sins are forgiven before they part. Told you. Grab people's hands, smile in their face, and shake it, their hands. So much reward. But you know what? That reminds us also we have to be clean. Many of the people I've seen, they come out of the bathroom, they don't wash their hands. How are we going to go around shaking everyone's hands if the Muslims are not washing their hands after the bathroom? Big problem, right? So let's be clean when we go to the bathroom and we leave the bathroom so we can shake everyone's hands and spread this beautiful dua of peace. Question, which way of giving salam is disliked? That you don't face them, right? That's from disrespect, yes. The Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in Abi Dawood, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, لا تقول عليك السلام فإن the Prophet ﷺ said, do not say alayka salam to somebody. Because verily that is the greeting that you greet the dead people with. The ones who are buried and gone on to their lords. So don't say alayka salam, okay? You can say assalamu alaykum or salamu alaykum. But don't say alayka salam. Because that is the greeting that is given to the death. Dead. Sometimes a person in a group or a group of people that you're giving salam to, they may not hear you. So how many times should you repeat the salam to them before you give up and say, okay, these people are deaf. I leave them alone. How many times should you give the salam to a group of people? Yes. Once is a must. You must give it once to try. It's recommended, highly recommended. Very good attempt. Anybody else? Three? Ahsant. Jazakallah khair. Three is the correct answer. In Bukhari, it's narrated by Anas radiallahu anhu who said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا تكلم بكلمة أعادها ثلاث حتى تفهم عنه. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from his traits and habits, when he wanted to speak about something important, he would repeat it three times so it would be understood from him. وإذا أتى على قوم فسلم عليهم سلم عليهم ثلاث. And when he would come upon a group of people and give them salam, he would give it three times. So we've learned that when you give salam up to a group, you give it three times, okay? Question, what are one of the signs of the Day of Judgment pertaining to the topic of salam? They will not say salam, right? So, it's like this. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of, uh, collected by Imam Ahmed, inna min ashrati sa'a إِنَّ مِنْ أَشْرَاطِ سَاعَةِ إِذَا كَانَتِ التَّحِيَّةُ عَلَى الْمَعْرِفَةِ That verily from the signs of the coming of the Day of Judgment, 
is that people will only give salam to those who they know. So you will be standing next to somebody, right? A person comes who knows that somebody, will look them in the face, smile at them as though this is the most loved person to him on earth, give them salam and completely ignore you. And you're standing there scratching your head thinking, what have I done? The guys just completely ignored me. Why? Because this is from the sign of the Day of Judgment that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. And sadly, it's something that we are seeing now. We're living that. I've experienced this many times. I'm next to somebody, someone's giving salam to that somebody, and I'm just left in the cold. Thinking, what's wrong with my breath? I thought my breath was a nice breath. The person just not giving me salam. This is something we have to avoid. The Prophet ﷺ was asked in the hadith, in Bukhari and Muslim, he was asked, ﷺ, ayyul Islam khair? Which, which is the best of Islam? I mean, which is from the best of practices of Islam? He said, and tutimu ta'am wa tukhra salam ala man araft wa man lam ta'rif. The Prophet ﷺ said to spread food, to, to give food to people who need it, and then to spread the salam to the ones you know and do not know. So going back to that point, we want to be like Pac-Man, right? We want to gather those good deeds. So wherever you go, you want to be giving the salam to the people you know or to the people you do not know, as much as you can in, in normal situations, without being too strange. Um, question, who gives salam in these situations? If there is somebody who is in his big land cruiser and there is somebody who's walking, which one gives salam to who first? The land cruiser should give salam first. If there's a group of people, large group of people and a small group of people, who gives salam first? The small group of people gives salam first, right? If a person is standing and a person is sitting, who gives salam first? The person who's standing. If a person is young and a person is old, who gives salam first? Young one gives to the older one, right? Not to himself. To the old one. Yes, very good. Ahsant. The Prophet وسلم, said in the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, Yusallimu araqibu ala al mashi, wal mashi ala al qaid, wa qalilun ala kathir. That the one who is on a riding beast, and that in today's age is like the land cruiser, then he gives salam to the one who is walking. And the walking one, the one who is standing, gives salam to the one who is sitting. And the small group gives salam to the large group, right? And then as I added also, but it's not in the hadith, that the youngsters, they give salam to the elders. Let's think about the reasons for this. So somebody is on a riding beast or is in his land cruiser, he should give salam to the one who is walking. Why is that? Very good. It's to do with pride. Because generally the people who can afford a riding beast, they're rich. And when they see people around them not having what they have from the riding beast, others have to walk, they feel a bit haughty and arrogant. It can creep into your heart. So to remove that, you should be the first to give salam to the people. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Man rafa'ahullah. Whoever humbles himself for the sake of Allah, then Allah will raise him high in status. Okay, so this is from one of the wisdoms of this. What about the one who is walking? Why should he give upon the one who is seating? Because it's as though he has entered upon the people. So the one who walks into a place, he's the one who's entered. So he's the one who should give salam to the one who's sitting. Why the small group should give salam to the big group? Because the rights of the big group are more than the rights of the small group. And obviously why the young should give salam to the old, because this is from the best of tarbiyah, the best of education in bringing them up with good manners. And this was mentioned, some of these wisdoms, by Imam Ibn Hajj al-Asqalani in his Fath al-Bari. From the adab also of giving salam, as narrated by Abi Dawood, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا لَقِيَ أَحَدُكُمْ أَخَاهُ فَلْيُسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ If one of you meets your brother, then give him salam. فَإِنْ حَالَتْ بَيْنَهُمَا شَجْرَةٌ أَوْ جِدَارٌ أَوْ حَجْرٌ ثُمَّ لَقِيَهُ فَلْيُسَلِّمْ عَلَيْهِ so he gives him salam to his brother, but if as they are walking and talking, a tree comes in between them, or a wall comes in between them, or a large rock comes in between them, and then he sees him after having passed that, he should again give him salam. Get it? So you're walking with your friend, but as you're walking, there's a tree between you. As soon as you pass the tree, give salam to each other. 
This is what the Prophet ﷺ is teaching us to do so. So one application of this which happens often is that if you're one of those people that likes to have guests in your house, so when you are serving your guests, you're coming in and out of the kitchen, right? So every time you come back into the room with some new food or a new drink, give salam to the people because you've left them. You went out of the room and you came back, but try to change your voice every time so they don't get bored, right? Give it with a different voice. So the point is, the sunnah, every time you see your brother, you give him salam, even if you are separated for a few moments. We should give and we should remind ourselves to give salam to kids. Many a time we don't see the kids because they're down there near our ankles, right? We're walking up here above high. We forget these little creatures running around. The Prophet ﷺ, the leader of the army, the leader of the nation, the one who had his wives, the one who would take care of the household affairs. With all of this, he was busy. Anas radiallahu anhu narrates in Bukhari and Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he would come by young children, he would stop to talk to them and to give them salam. Subhanallah. See how high the character of the Prophet ﷺ was and his morals. Being who he was, the leader of the nation, yet he would find time to stop and give salam to these little creatures that we have running around. So this is how we should be too. That we stop and we show respect to the youngsters because how can we expect respect from them if we're not giving them respect? If we're not teaching them how to be respectful, don't expect respect back from them. So give salam to the youngsters. Who should you not give salam to? Unless it's a reply. MashaAllah, you're quick. What's he been eating? Alhamdulillah. Shaitan, if you see him, you'll probably faint, so you won't be able to give him salam, right? And another, somebody else, who should you not give salam to? The non-Muslims, right? The Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith, uh, in Muslim, لا تبدأوا اليهود والنصارى بالسلام Don't start the Jews or the Christians with salam. Don't when you see them, say to them, salamu alaykum, right? But you can say to them, good morning, how you doing? Good afternoon, how you doing? Things like that you can say to them, right? But it's pertaining to this dua of salam. However, in Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا سَلَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ أَهْلُ الْكِتَابِ فَقُولُوا عَلَيْكُمْ If the Ahlul Kitab, the Jews and the Christians, they say to you, excuse me, they say to you clearly, "Assalamu alaykum," and you hear that clearly, then reply to them, "Wa alaykum," and upon you also. This is the reply that you can give to them, right? And some scholars, they went even further. They said, rather, and Ibn Qayyim, he mentions this, Imam Ibn Qayyim, he said, rather, if you hear them say, Assalamu alaykum, clearly, then you can say back, not only wa alaykum, you can say back wa alaykum salam and anything else they say to you. Like, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. You can say that back to them. Why? Because it goes back to the verse that we mentioned earlier on. إِذَا حَيِّتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّ بِأَحْسَنِ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّهَا if you are given a greeting, then return that greeting in similar or better than it, right? So this verse also applies in all general situations. And also the Imam Ibn Qaymi said it's from justice. We're not a people of injustice. So you've, if you hear clearly from the Ahlul Kitab, the Jews and the Christians, that they say, Salamu Alaikum to you, then it's from justice to reply to them. This is one opinion. If you come across a mixed group of people sitting together, Jews, Christians, Muslims, or Muslims and non-Muslims of any sort. What do you say? Because we said you cannot start the non-Muslims with salam. You cannot say to them, salam alaikum. You can say to the Muslims, assalamu alaikum, and to the rest of them, guys, how are you doing? You could say something like that, very good. Or you could say, assalamu alaikum to everyone, intending just the Muslims, okay? And then, you, of course, you would go on and give another greeting to those who are there, who are non-Muslims. And this takes place a lot in the offices where we work and in the gatherings where we mix with the non-Muslims. Tayyib. One of the things from the adab that we are not supposed to do, as mentioned by Imam, Imam al-Nisa'i, he said, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تسلموا تسليم اليهود فإن تسليمهم بالرؤوس والأكف والإشارة The Prophet ﷺ said, do not give the salam the way that the Jews give salam. For very, they give salam by moving their heads, by nodding their heads, or by waving their hands, or by some form of ishara, some movement that they do, right? The Prophet ﷺ said, do not do this. Why? 
Number one, not to copy what is known to be their way. Number two, you miss out, you get into a habit. Some of us do this, right? And we don't give the salam. We forget to give the salam. So Shaykh Uthaymin, he said, it's allowed for you to give a gesture if the brother is far away from you. I can give him salam alaykum. He's probably, if the mic's not on, he's not going to hear me. He'll see my gesture and I can give salam with my mouth. That's allowed. Then you can gesture. Or if there's a group of women, right? You can say salamu alaykum in that manner to them, right? Gesturing to them. Otherwise, you don't give salam with gesture. You have to say it with words. What should you do when you enter the masjid and is a person you haven't seen for a long time? Which salam should you give first? Salam to the masjid or salam to the person you haven't seen for a long time? How do we give salam to the masjid, by the way? By making dua, which is in the form of two raka'ah. When you enter the masjid, you pray something called tahiyatul tahiyat masjid, which is you pray two raka before you sit down, right? So this is what must be done. You give salam to the masjid first, the rights of the masjid first, then you give salam to the person that you want to give salam to. And now this person that you haven't seen for a long time, and you start hugging him and kissing him, and is this allowed? Yes, you're allowed to hug the person, and you're allowed to even give the person a peck on the cheek and rub the nose if you want to do so. But this rubbing of the nose... And the pecking, it shouldn't be done often, like we see in some cultures. Every time they see one another, instead of headbutting each other, they nosebutt each other, right? This is not allowed to be done, right? It's not from the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. It's allowed once in a while if you haven't seen the person for a while. When you're in the masjid, what situation should you not give salam to your brother? When you're praying salah, you can't give salam for sure. Very good. Another situation. During the Friday khutbah, exactly. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Bukhari, إِذَا قُلْتَ لِصَاحِبِكَ يَوْمُ الْجُمَّةِ وَالْإِمَامُ يَخْتُبْ إِذَا قُلْتَ لِصَاحِبِكَ يَوْمُ الْجُمَّةِ أَنْصِتْ وَالْإِمَامُ يَخْتُبْ فَقَدْ لَغَوْتَ If you say to your companion who's next to you on the Day of Judgment, be quiet, because he's talking, and the Imam is speaking, then verily you have spoilt your Jummah. So if you cannot even say to a person, be quiet, then min bab al-awla, then more so you cannot say to him, Salamu alaykum, while the imam is giving the khutbah. Because while the imam is giving the khutbah, you're not supposed to be picking your nose or playing on the carpet or doing something else. You're supposed to be focusing totally on what the imam is saying, right? And also this applies to if you see somebody busy with the Qur'an. Try not to disturb them. Try not to disturb them because they are busy worshipping their Lord. You are allowed to. It's not forbidden, but it's better for you not to because the person is deep in contemplation on the words of his Lord, so leave him alone until after he has finished the Qur'an. In some cultures, or in some places, many places in fact, a lot of people, after the Salah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, they grab your hand and they shake it. What is the ruling on this? Because we said it's beautiful for you to grab people's hands and shake their hands. It's something which we are trying to encourage in this lecture. Here, Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah was asked about this and he said, Al-Musafahatu aqib salah laysa masnuna bal huwa min al-bid'ah. Shaykh Islam, when he was asked about this, he said that to shake people's hands after the salah is not from the sunnah, rather it's an, an innovation. So it's something which should be avoided. However, we have to give more information here. It's not as simple as that. So the Shaykh is absolutely correct that it's not something which was found amongst the Prophet Sallallahu time. His companions, they wouldn't do this. That after the salam, they would go ahead and shake people's hands, giving salam alaikum, salam alaikum. Right? It happens, right? You see this in the front row. It's like a domino effect. It starts in the front row, goes to the back row, etc. So you're not supposed to do that if you do it thinking that it's something which should be done after every salah. You see the qaid here. The qaid is that you shouldn't do it thinking that it's something which should be done, it's virtuous to do after every salah. However, if it just happened to be that you're there praying and somebody next to you, you're a very good looking person, young man, and I have a daughter, I want to get married. So I notice him saying, Bashar, Tabarakallah, Assalamu Alaikum, get to know him, that's allowed. Or somebody you haven't seen for a long time and it just overtakes you that you want to give them salam, that's allowed. Because it's not something that you are thinking that it's sunnah to do after every salah. It's What's another word for um, It's not planned, right? It's not planned. So in that situation, it's allowed for you, to, for you to do. And one of the reasons we shouldn't do it, apart from the fact that it's not sunnah, 
and it wasn't found in the early generations because it disturbs the person who's making dhikr and this is something which annoys me a lot I'm there trying to make my dhikr and people are putting their hands you know and, and you're trying to remember Allah and you're unable to do so because you have to reply to the whole front row when can there be a situation when you should not greet a Muslim what it refers to the ulama they mention like Imam Nawi rahimahullah ta'ala and others they say if a person in the community is known for openly sinning or openly spreading bid'ah innovation then this person the salam should not be given to this person why why do you think we, we're not saying that he's a munafiq we're saying that the person is openly sinning he has fisk and the person may be spreading innovation right so absolutely exactly so if the whole community abstains from giving this person salam then hopefully that person will feel that I've been abandoned by the community due to my sins and due to my wrongdoings so I have to leave that alone and return back to worshiping Allah in the correct manner and then my community of brothers and sisters will start to give me salam again and this is something which is actually established in the Sunnah but we won't go into that but the point is the ruling is it's there if somebody scholars they say to us that particular person is openly sinning and openly spreading innovation then in this situation salam can be avoided with the big if the super big if like the brother mentioned if it's if it results in the person returning back to the sunnah and returning back to obedience however if it's in a situation like many of our situations in the west where the muslim communities are weak and the muslim communities that do exist they have a variety of strands of islam the guy is not probably going to care if you say to him, I'm not going to give you salam anymore, he'll say, thank goodness, I don't have to deal with you anymore. Every time I see you telling me sunnah this, sunnah that, he'll be happy. He'll carry on with his bidah, spreading his sin, spreading his innovation. So if it results in that type of situation, then no, you don't apply the ruling. You apply the ruling where it's hopefully going to result in a person leaving off the sins and leaving off the innovation. That's in general. There are a lot more details to it that ulama mentioned, but however, that's enough for us to mention. And like the brother also mentioned, it's disliked to give salam if somebody is relieving themselves, of course, because it happened to the Prophet ﷺ once, and the Prophet ﷺ didn't reply to the person who gave him salam whilst he was relieving himself. And then later on, he went and apologized, and he said, Inni karihtu an Allah ta'ala ala ghayri I dislike to mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless I'm in a situation of purity, purification, right? In a situation of wudu. So it's disliked to give salam to somebody in that situation. When might it be permissible for you to lie about salam, about giving salam? To reconcile the hearts of the believers and to reconcile the hearts even of friends and families. So for example, if my brother here, we're found, la samahallah, may Allah not make it so, that we have a disagreement. A third brother who knows us may contact him and say, you know what, brother Shahid gave you salam, but I didn't, right? And then he will come to me and say, you know what? That brother there, he gave you salam and he really misses you. So these kind of words can be said to reconcile the hearts, to try to bring people back together. So in this situation, it's permissible. And with this, we come to the end. And I remember you, remind you and myself with what we started with. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تدخلون الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا أولا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه the Prophet ﷺ said, you're not going to enter into Jannah until you believe. And you're not going to believe until you love one another. And you're not going to, shall I not tell you to do a matter that if you do it, you will love one another? Spread salam amongst yourselves with the meanings and the intents that we mentioned in the beginning of the lecture. Anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shortcomings and mistakes were from myself and shaitan.